Hi everybody, Dave from Dave's Specialty Foods here again with another awesome fun video. Um, it's that time of year when we're gonna do, I think this is gonna be called Fall Favorites, but we're going, doing a, a couple things. We're doing some ratatouille, which might not be a fall favorite in America, <laughs> but we're gonna try to make it one because it, it screams cool fall veggies and um, lots of technique involved and lots of good smells and spices and herbs and comfort cooking. I like to kind of throw a curveball once in a while. I don't want to just make, you know, how to make uh, 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 roast beef sandwiches. And figure that one out on your own. <laughs> but um, we are going to show you some cool techniques. Some of them might be a little different. Um, basic stuff, how to cut an onion, how to, you know, kind of chirp your knife a little bit. Um, and how to cook an acorn squash that I think most of the time people just want to buy for decoration. And uh, I get sort of depressed about that. You can tell by what else is going on in the cart at the store that they're not gonna cook this. They're gonna use this for the front door and the squirrels are gonna eat it. The squirrels are actually smarter <laughs> for knowing that you can eat that. This is the time of year when we get that sweater out and the smell of garlics and garlic and onions in your kitchen. Buying fun things like squashes that you don't either get to see or eat all year long and try some different dishes, stuff that's kind of cooked for a long time or stews or a new soup, something like that. So here we go. So we're gonna do three recipes for you guys today, okay? So um, and if you have any questions, you can't ask them because this is a video. <laughs> so there, <laughs> call me at the shop or something. I don't know, send me a text. Uh, by the way, we're filming our shop here. So um, if you've never been here before, um, come into the shop and grab a sandwich. Um, so we're gonna make roasted acorn squash. We're gonna show you how we do that. We're gonna make ratatouille, like I said, uh, which is a French, kind of stewed vegetables. It's a lot of cutting. It's a little bit, you gotta get two pans involved here and there's a little bit of sauteing going on. Um, so it's a little bit challenging. I think a lot of people say, oh, that's scary. I don't wanna do that. But what's fun is you get this awesome dish of vegetables that you don't have to be a vegetarian to enjoy. So very, very different. There's like five or six veggies in there and it really is kind of easy once you do it, okay? Then we're gonna make um, uh, buttermilk biscuits, homemade buttermilk biscuits, not that stuff you buy at uh, the Popeye's drive. Okay. This, this is kind of like a menu, so it's not three different recipes. It's, I mean, I could picture eating uh, ratatouille with a little bit of balsamic drizzle on it, maybe some goat cheese on top. This roasted acorn squash that has its own like bowl that it makes with that maple flavor, which is totally different than the ratatouille with that kind of curry seasoning that we're gonna put on it. And with a biscuit to kind of sop up all those juices. So this is kind of a complete menu that really, really makes sense. And if nothing else, make the darn biscuits, but don't wimp out and not do one of the others. I mean, it's really, really, this is good stuff. So we're gonna start with this acorn squash, okay? So like I said, you're gonna see these in a lot of nurseries or, you know, they probably have them at Menards by the pumpkins and stuff like that. You can eat these things, okay? It's very noticeable. It's not a pumpkin. Um, it only looks like itself. And some of the cooking shows will be using acorn squash, but I don't see this ever in restaurants, never. What I see in restaurants is acorn squash ravioli. They call it homemade. Um, probably one out of 4,000 restaurants makes homemade ravioli. Rare instances, you, you do get that, but um, otherwise I'd never see acorn squash on a plate. It's pretty darn easy to make a big batch of this. You can save it for a whole week. It doesn't go bad, it doesn't change, it doesn't move. It's kind of like a sweet potato. Once it's cooked, you can. it's so easy for restaurants to do this and they wimp out, they don't want to do it. I do like to see a little bit of orange. I don't know why this is, if the orange maybe just was sitting, you know, the acorn squash was sitting like this on the dirt, you know what I mean, where it just didn't get sunlight, because sunlight is what makes stuff green, by the way, you guys. If there's no sun, you get white asparagus, right? Why is asparagus white, white asparagus? Because they block it from the sun. As soon as the sun hits the asparagus, bam, it turns it green. But the orange part usually tells me that's the squash that I want. I like it to have a little bit of orange. It's a little bit older, okay? It's, there's a little nub on here from the stem. Okay, what I do, take the back of your knife, you know, the, 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 don't do this at home. <laughs> the back, the, the dull end of your knife, okay? And I just kinda, just kinda give this a whack. Don't be afraid to get this out of your way because it's very hard. I'm just gonna give it a whack. See, it flies across the room like that. What we're gonna do is just let it sit on the rib here a little bit, just like it is. And it's gonna roll around a little bit, but we're gonna whack it. So you, now you got your sharp end of the knife, okay? So we're literally gonna just, just aim it. Don't take a full backward golf swing at it. Take a good, firm, bam. Look how perfect that is. Look how perfect that slice was. So you're gonna hit the center, and then we're gonna we're just gonna bear down on it. You gotta be careful with your tip here. And the reason I'm going blah, blah, blah on this is because, you know, here it is. And a lot of people don't know what to do with this, and they start walking around. But you're gonna grab the end of the blade here. Don't slip off and cut yourself. And just kind of lean into it, get it down there, and then kind of just coax it down there, okay? So as you mind, you, it's okay, oh, I fell out. It's okay if your knife is in there and you wanna get the whack on the board like that. It's okay. Um, otherwise, we're just gonna get, and you've got your acorn squash. Now the work is done. 
And if you miss your cut on the first time and you kind of hit it towards like the, the quarter mark there, try again. <laughs> There'll be some hash marks, but no one's gonna see it because you serve it upright like this. We're gonna empty our seeds out now. So there's seeds, a lot of people save these. If you've got like five acorn squashes you're roasting, maybe save the seeds. What you do is you soak them, then you gotta boil them with a little bit of salt, a lot of salt. Then you gotta let them sit in the salt water, then you drain them and then you uh, let them dry and you roast them in the oven, okay? Great, you can do it, it's, it's great, fantastic. But I'm, I'm roasting one acorn squash here. I'm gonna chuck these seeds, okay? I'll just roast them with the squash and then we'll chuck them later, okay? It's only gonna give me enough seeds to enjoy uh, half an episode of The Office, so that's about all you get from me. There's a little bit of mushy stuff in here, for lack of a better word here. Um, leave it, here. So we're gonna hit this with a little bit of butter. So I'm gonna cut about a, a good nub of butter here. Okay, that's about a half a tablespoon of butter. Don't be too cheap, okay? I like a pretty good chunk of butter in there. A little bit of maple syrup. Come with this. There's one ingredient. You you bleed the tree of the sap, you boil it down, it's maple syrup. So for those of you at home who have, the, the, they're called syrups. They're, they're are, I think, I don't know if they call them maple syrup. They're probably called maple flavored syrup, maybe by law. Probably no maple syrup in them at all. Bad, okay? But make sure if you're eating something, eat what it's supposed to be, not what it's trying to be. Don't eat maple flavored syrup. Don't eat low fat cream cheese. All that high fructose corn syrup and stuff, blow that. Okay, so maple syrup, okay? I just filled this up with about a, a little nub in the bottom. Let's say that's a tablespoon and a half, okay? If you like a lot more, great. A little bit of salt and pepper on here, and I mix my salt and pepper for, for ease of, of, of the video. And, and at home, I, I do that sometimes too. So you salt and pepper mixed together. So we're just gonna uh, make, sprinkle the top. And we always sprinkle, don't use a salt shaker. Okay, that's a big, big rule. Any cooking show you watch ever that exists, that I've ever seen in my life, and I just turned 55, has never used a salt shaker ever. Think about that. So we're gonna sprinkle. You use a little bit less salt when you do that. We're gonna use the rim and a little bit inside, okay? So get the rim and a little bit inside. This one squash, depending on the size of it, is going to be three to four servings. So this this half, you can tell, is a little bit bigger. It's got a little bit more girth to it here. This, I could eat the whole, this whole half myself. Just this with maybe some risotto inside or some ratatouille, no problem. But you could easily roast this first, then cut it in half right through the skin and serve this for four people. It'd be a wonderful vegetable. This is gonna go in the oven. That's how easy it is. Cut syrup in the oven. So this squash right now is in a 350 convection. That means that fan is blowing. A lot of ovens now, they give you a little choice, maybe the digital or whatever, and they give you a little choice to cook convection. Really blast that heat it, it, from all sides and it makes the top of the squash brown and it makes your muffins pop up better. It makes our biscuits. You're gonna see our biscuits gonna cook in like 10 minutes. They're gonna puff up and get nice and brown. You got a crispy top and a creamy inside. I put the timer for about 35 minutes. These are probably gonna take 45, but we'll check it at 35. Let's do our biscuits now, okay? I like these oversized bowls. You can see how kind of big this bowl is, okay? Bigger than my head. So I always get my ingredients out. Number one, I know I have them. And number two, uh, they, they look, make it easier to dole out now from the ingredients being out, then I'm gonna measure. Like if I need to make biscuits, I've got my butter cut and measured here. It's cold little cubes, see how I cut that already? I've got my baking soda and powder, all that ready to go. You got two cups of flour, all right? So in we go, just regular all-purpose flour. Try to use something like King Arthur. There is a difference, okay? There's, there's a difference, you'll notice a difference in the color when you use it. It's got a little bit more you know, natural weed in it. It's not so processed, okay? We're gonna take some baking soda and baking powder that I have mixed in here. So in we go. We're gonna go in here with our baking soda and powder. There's there's always these little clumps in here that you can find. So what I like to do is mix the dry ingredients really, really well before anything else goes in. It just goes for all your cookies and your cakes and all that. We'll put a little bit of salt and pepper in here. I don't know if that's in the recipe, but we're putting it in. You wanna kind of work this around and get all, I, what I do is I push on, on, the, on the flour and the baking soda and powder. You can, uh, what do you call it, sift this, but this is more fun. When you're making a biscuit, it, you have to use your hands. You can't put this in a machine. You're gonna come up with bread. We don't wanna make bread. We wanna make delicate, flaky, buttery, um, individual layers of puffy, fluffy, okay? We don't want bread. When you put this in a machine, it, it mixes it too much. That's what makes a good biscuit so light. Make sure we don't feel any little baking soda, little balls in here. Good. We're gonna take our, uh, I believe this is five tablespoons of butter and I've cut it up into these, just these little cubes, okay? It's like kind of pretty cold, okay? So, in we go. Let's get ready to cook while we're at it. Don't make your biscuits halfway and then go rooting around. You see your flour hands. You're rooting around your kitchen looking for buttermilk and your, 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 your sugar for the topping. We wanna to be ready now. We've got a, a brush with cream in it. We'll visit this in a second, don't worry. 
I'm not losing you here. We've got a little bit of granulated sugar here. All right, we've got uh, a little bit of flour here to throw on our table so we don't stick, right? And we've got some buttermilk. We've got one cup of buttermilk already measured. See, back to the prepping. You've got to be measured here and ready to go with this because once we start, we, we want to add our buttermilk, mix our dough, and start cutting our biscuits. And we've got a cutter here. Look at that, imported from France. I brought this from France, uh, oh my gosh, 1986 or something like that. Contraband. The reason this is called a layered biscuit and the reason that you get um, uh, flakes is not because the biscuit is flaky, it's because you made it flaky. We've got our flour and our baking powder, our, our rising ingredients, and we've got our butter. But what we do is, this is why you have to use your fingers. We're gonna take the butter and we're gonna make a flake. See that? See that little flaky piece of butter that I just squished? Okay, you can't do this in a machine. A machine can try to do this, but it's not gonna make it a good one. So we make a flake, see that? Make a flake. So we're just gonna take all our butter and just make flakes out of the butter while we mix it into the flour. This is not gonna complete our dough. This is just simply taking the butter and making these super, super thin, look at that. Look at that super little thin little butter. That's a butter flake, okay? And what it does, when we mix this very, very delicately and softly, unlike a machine, see, we're pushing the butter through our fingers like this. Basic, basic stuff. People might be watching this one. Yeah, I know, Dave, just make it. This is really, really why you do it and, and, and the reason that, that you get a better biscuit when you eat a date. What we've got here is all this little butter is just kind of, I don't know if you can see, it looks kind of like peas, like they say in recipes. The recipe will look like um, dried peas or something like that. We're gonna keep our hands dirty and going and we're gonna go right on into our buttermilk, okay? Buttermilk goes in. That's one cup of buttermilk. We're ready to go. So we didn't have to do anything other than go right into our bit mix. We've got some flour, we've got our cutter, and we've got a clean countertop ready to go here, okay? We're gonna work right on the countertop. You wanna use a clean countertop that's smooth and not a cutting board. So in we go. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our fingers and we're gonna mix this around. We're not gonna work it like that, like we did with the butter. We're just gonna mix it around until it barely comes together, okay? And that's it. So this, this is already done. And we just gotta bring it together. It's very, very simple. It's messy, but it's fun, okay? All right, so you can kind of see very, very lightly here. You can see some butter in here. You don't wanna, and look at how soft the dough is. You see how soft this is? It just, it's not like a pie dough. You guys have ever rolled a pie dough out and you roll it and the pie dough starts kind of squishing back and forth. That's kind of bready and hard. It's got a purpose for it, but our biscuits, you wanna be soft. You don't want them to mush around like that. Now what I do, I just barely bring it together here. And we're gonna take, now we're gonna start adding a little touch of flour, just a little touch, just, just on the surface, just so we can grab this and get it out of here, okay? Just a little touch, I added about a tablespoon of flour in here. All right, just so we can bring these together. So if you've done this properly, there shouldn't be a lot of dough on your fingers, okay? It should be just nice and nice and soft and sexy. It's basic, but this is really hard to do, okay? So we've got our dough, and look at it. Oh, we smell it, it smells good. There's our bowl, we're gonna be by with that. Now, we've got our, our regular countertop. Now what you do, you don't wanna just add flour. You kinda wanna sprinkle a little bit, because what I see is when I take a peek in, in people's kitchens and they're rolling out, you know, in these restaurants, they got flour all over the place. So instead of having two cups of flour in here, now you have like two and a half because you put flour all over and then they get dry. So just enough to barely what you think is, is almost not enough. Now I'm gonna cut square biscuits. And the reason I'm gonna cut square biscuits is because when you use a cup to cut these, you get one really good batch that's not, not been mixed again. And you gotta mix all the excess in and it starts getting tough and chewy. So a square biscuit, one cut, and they're, they're perfect. So what I do, okay, a little bit of flour on your, on your fingers, and we're just gonna push this around. We're not, don't roll this with a rolling pin. We're just gonna push this around till it's about, I don't know, a little bit less than an inch thick out of your finger, okay? And we're just gonna push this out till it's sort of a generic rectangle, doesn't have to be perfect. We want kind of homey looking, okay? So, perfect, all right? So we're gonna tip it over, look at that. Make your edges square. Now we're gonna take the cutter. What's nice about the cutter is it doesn't cut, it's not sharp. You see what I'm saying? So it serves a couple purposes. We can clean up our table when we're done. We can pick up our dough and we can cut without slicing our, our, our 
countertop apart. So I love this. You'll see a lot of bakers using this. You can feel real professional. These things are like 10 bucks online. Just get one. See, I'm gonna cut probably one, two, three, four, five by three, okay? Now, if you're at home going, oh my gosh, look at this one compared to this one. Okay, fine, pull this guy out, cut him in half, okay? These have to be fairly equal, okay? So they're fairly, nah, I'm torn between this, but I'm gonna leave it. You're gonna have this rounded corner here. Don't try to make them perfect. They should look a little funky. So biscuits uh, need to go on a tray together. Don't put them like cookies apart like that. They need to bake together. You want to be right next to each other and almost turn into one big biscuit that are just kind of connected, okay? It just helps them uh, not overcook, okay? Now, it's nice about making uh, four, eight, 12, 16 is that you, they're all equal. You're not missing them apart, okay? So try to make them even. All right, now let's keep going with this. We've made our biscuits. We still have our fingers like this. Let's keep rolling with it. See how I didn't have to go rooting around the kitchen to go make my get my stuff, I'm all ready to go. This is heavy cream. This is heavy whipping cream with a brush, with just a pastry brush, or you buy a, a, a pretty good quality paint brush, just use it in the kitchen, please. This is kind of the key to this whole thing. If we just baked them like this, you're missing that topping. It's like having a donut with no glaze, okay? So we wanna be really generous. Look at how much I'm putting on here, okay? Don't be cheap on this. and then sugar. We're just gonna sprinkle a little touch of sugar on here. Just a touch, I don't want sweet, but I just want a little crisp on top. Just, even if I'm eating this with meatloaf or something, it's just got that little touch of sweetness. That's it. Remember, we preheated our oven. This is gonna go at 350, maybe 375 you can do, but convection. If you have a convection, try it. And, 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 and if your directions say cook for 20 minutes, put it for 10 and check it, because the convection is gonna cook a little quicker. Here we go. So we've got our squash cooked, which takes sometimes close to calling an hour almost. So we put the timer for that at 35 to 40 minutes. We've got our biscuits cooking along with the acorn squash and convection at 350. And I set the timer for that for 10 minutes. So as we go now, those are both cooking. We've got a little time. We're gonna make our ratatouille. This is all real time. We don't have anything cooked that we're pulling out and going, hey, look, look at this. Look what we made. We're gonna get our knife skills going in. So make sure you, I always tell people, use the knife that you like to use, not the knife your friend or your sister or your brother told you to use. Use a knife that's very comfortable for you, okay? It's got, you can hold it good. You say, oh, this is an expensive knife, but it hurts my finger. Before we start, we've got a cutting board. I use a nylon cutting board, so it can take the cuts, okay? You're gonna get some little cut marks in here, but it can accept the cut. You don't want a cutting board that's made out of glass very bad. Underneath, you put a towel. I put a wet towel, not only, can I finish my job and clean up when I'm done? But my cutting board won't roll before you cut almost every day. You should use this. This isn't a knife sharpener. It's kind of a, it's, it's called a, a steel. It's just a reminder for your knife for the next hour or so that you're gonna cut. I, I need to just finish the edge just for you. It's not gonna be a permanent sharpener, but it'll really help. It's usually got a little a tip in the bottom here, okay? You'll see a lot of people on TV doing this. Not happening. Can you hear that? Not much going on, okay? And you're going right towards your finger. We wanna stab it into our nice cutting board, okay? Don't be afraid to nick this up. And we wanna go downward, number one, it's safe. And it really, now, listen to this. It gives it, it really, I'm really able to push into this, put an angle on it, and just go down, 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 down. See that? Sometimes you can go twice, look at that. You'll really notice a difference. If your knife is driving you crazy, it won't go through the pepper, and it's rolling around the tomato. So, here's where we're gonna make ratatouille. Okay, so we've got a cutting board that's not gonna roll around on us. We've got a knife that's got some sharpness to it. It's clean, we're all cleaned up. Our things are baking. We're gonna saute an onion with some garlic and peppers. And, and what this is, is it's zucchini and eggplant. And a lot of people say, I don't like eggplant, but Dave, I had your ratatouille, and wow, that was fantastic. Don't be afraid of eggplant. You're gonna put it in here, it's gonna kind of bury itself into the tomatoes and the peppers. Most people won't even know it's there. It's delicious, okay? You're missing out if you just say, I don't like eggplant, okay? Don't wimp out. Uh, we've got our uh, onion. I've just peeled the onion, okay? Let's let's give this a dice. Now, what I wanna do though, is get my, my little uh, pan already hot. We've got a pretty high fire on here. Just make sure your fire's not hot, okay? And we're gonna put our pan dry here, nothing in it. Get your pan a little hot so when we cut this, we can throw it right in the pan and start our, our, our cooking. I cut it in half, uh, top to bottom, and then what we're gonna do with my nice newly sharp knife is I wanna, I wanna slice this onion and don't go all the, see, see the knife? Don't go all the way through. 
we're gonna pull the knife down and let it cut so it's still connected. See, this is still connected. So I'm going straight down and 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 might might seem how my fingers are uh, tucked in like that, okay? So we're gonna we're gonna cut the end so it's all fanned out like a little Chinese fan. It's still connected here though. Now we're gonna come in on the side just once is enough. So it's so see it's all cut this way and I'm cutting about three quarters this way. So once we slice down on here, look how easy this is. You'll cry a lot less. Now we get to the end that we didn't cut and we're gonna just give that a couple slices and dice right up, up, across. There's our onion. That's a half an onion, it's a lot of onion. We're gonna go into our dry pan. See that? Right into our dry pan. We're gonna leave that. We're gonna get nice and hot and we're gonna go check our biscuits because the alarm's going on. 10 minutes. 10 minutes, they're perfect. This is what you want, just a little bit of, see the cream kind of brown in the bottom, just a little bit of brownie. We're gonna push out, you can tell they've crackled and pushed up and you can see the shiny custard on here, the cream. Look at this one, but don't overcook them, okay? So I'm telling you guys, this was 10 minutes in my oven and these are super hot and look at the bottom, nice and brown and they're just, ah, they smell amazing, okay? I mean, it's piping hot, okay? And it's just, see that? And it's just flaky inside and biscuity. If this, oh, it smells biscuity. We're just gonna put them on the side here. Let's get them off of the pan. See how I just pulled that paper right off? Look at that. So now they're they're done. They're finished cooking. They're gonna cool off a lot quicker, and this pan won't keep cooking the bottom. So we've got onions in here, dry pan. Let's put some garlic. All right. So here's when the fun starts. We gotta start jumping here now. Let's put a little garlic in here. Start caramelizing these onions and add a little touch of garlic. About a clove and a half. I've got my garlic already uh, uh, chopped, okay? Look at all that garlic. That lasts us here about two days. We're gonna let that cook, okay? We're gonna let these onions kind of brown and caramelize. And and what we wanna do here is saute everything separately and then mix it together because everything needs its own little browning, okay? You don't want to just use, oh, oh I'm, gonna, I'm gonna shortcut Dave's recipe and just put everything together in there and mix it all together. No bueno, okay? So I'm gonna switch fires here. Zucchinis have these nubs on the top and a little bit on the bottom. We're not gonna worry about that, are we? All right? We're gonna just cut right through it, okay? So you wanna wash this a little bit before you use it. No brainer, okay? So we're gonna cut down these big kind of steaks here. We're gonna cut this into kind of a large dice, okay? So I've cut these little julienne strips. See that? Steak, julienne strip. You could roast that, do something different. Just grill those. Look at how cool they look. French fried zucchinis on the grill. That would be so good. We're gonna cut these nice, even, see your nice sharp knife? Nice, even dices here, okay? See that? And when you get good enough, you can you can slice this and pile them up. Make sure they're nice and even on the end. See, it's just like your onion. Nice, even dices, okay? In we go in a dry pan. This is hot, I can feel it, smoking hot. We're gonna olive oil on top. See, now it's sizzle. Our onions are browning. See this, you guys? Oh my gosh, we got two pans going. I'm stressing out. Don't freak out. You have the power, not the pan. Think it's too hot? Move your pan over there, right? That's easy. Let these brown a little bit. And the zucchini. Now here's the move I want you guys to start working in. You gotta learn this, okay? Because with that, how do you flip these zucchinis? You're gonna take a little tongs and just flip each one of these? Okay, no, that kind of sucks. Watch this, we just want to give us a quick flip. See how easy that is? It's just a quick little, little, let the zucchinis fly to the front and pick them back up. If they fall, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. Okay? That's a move that I want you to start working on. Look at our onions. Now let those brown. So real time here, you guys. This has maybe been three, four minutes. This goes kind of quick, okay? And here's the zucchinis starting to lightly brown there. Here's that move again, watch this. Boom, boom, boom. We have our zucchinis, they're just gonna cook in about one minute. Just gonna brown, that's it. Let's take our, our eggplant. Okay, I'm gonna peel the top and bottom. Now, while you're doing this, you gotta stay awake here. And here's my, here's my zucchinis. Look at those. They're browning, they're perfect little nuggets of love. Okay, I love that, okay? In we go. We're gonna go into our onions. My onions are brown. We've turned the heat off. Now we're gonna go into our onions. Let's cut our eggplant up here. And I'm peeling this, okay? So I'm peeling the outside of the eggplant. We're gonna, we're gonna make pretty large steaks. Remember the steaks we had there? Okay, it's pretty good looking. It's not too bad, but it does have some of these brown parts in here. Two kinds of brown, you get brown from an old eggplant, you know, it's aged or whatever. And then sometimes they, they, they brown, they freeze. Apples will do the same thing. Same thing, we cut our little steaks, remember, or our little sticks, remember those? And in we go, let's make our little dices, okay? You want to have about equal 
portions of the vegetables, okay? And, and just slide these with the back of the knife right in. See how nice that looks? Very professional, clean, safe, okay? Now these instantly are gonna start sucking up that olive oil. These are little sponges, okay? So you gotta be really generous with more olive oil. It's gonna be amazing how much olive oil these things suck up, okay? Remember our technique, okay? Just high heat. Look at all that olive oil poured in there, bone dry pan. Boom, boom, boom. About seasoning. We want to have salt and pepper and some seasonings on here. Never put salt on, on, um, on your zucchinis or onions or your eggplant while it's cooking. As soon as you put salt on there, you, you stop sauteing and searing and it starts boiling and water starts coming out of your vegetable and you lose that brown, dry, crunchy idea of sauteing and searing. Keep the salt out of here until we're done. So dry pan, nice and hot. Let's add more olive oil. Remember that spray? So we're going to stir and get your spoon in there and loosen these up. Okay? And, and flip, flip, flip. Look at that. Bone dry already. All right? Guys, look at this. Look at the browning on these, okay? So the nice color coming here. This is what we're looking for. People say, I don't like eggplant, but Dave, your eggplant's so delicious. Because we, we did proper technique. That's really what the difference is. So a pepper, okay? I might say red pepper. Green pepper has a little bit of a more of a green taste. You can understand what I'm saying. Start getting that same green pepper starts getting colored. Um, it really takes on a little bit of a mellow sweet taste. Pick your color. I don't care. Okay. I grew up in the French restaurant business using green peppers. We never use a red pepper for this. But I like the color in here. Okay. So we're gonna cut it in half. Pull those seeds out. Pull the whole seed packet out of there. And I, I usually pull this little capsaicin they call it sometimes. That's the little hot part on a jalapeno pepper. So what I do in peppers, most people get the top and they get very frustrated with the knife not going through. Okay, we're gonna cut the pepper upside down. See the knife goes right in, goes right in. Okay, so we're gonna cut the inside of the pepper into a little strip, not too thin. It's a little awkward to cut them like this, but it really works nice. So we're gonna dice like we did before. About the size of the onions. These are a little smaller than, than everything else because these are real crunchy and we just wanna do a quick saute with these, okay? I'm probably gonna use only about that much. When it's too much, it's, it's too much. I've got enough pepper in here. I don't want it just to taste, to take over the flavor. I just want enough pepper for color and some crunch. All right, now they're dry. Now when we start adding a little salt to this now, you really will get, see how, see how it just picked up? I don't know if you hear that. It just started getting a little bit louder on the sizzle because water's gonna start coming out of these eggplants. And in we go. So we have eggplant, zucchini with their onions and garlic. All right. Let's add our, our pepper. Walk that in. Look at how hot that is. Dry pan, a little bit of olive oil. Over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on our fire. Our peppers are just gonna be a quick saute. They're not really gonna brown. You can cook these for an hour and they will never brown, okay? So they're just gonna get a little bit of a sear, a dark flavor, okay? In we go with our heat. Now, you see how we're building this? We're gonna add, uh, uh, some herbs de Provence. That's a French herb. Sprinkle a little herbs de Provence on there. There's our alarm for our squash. We're gonna hit this with a little bit of curry powder. See that yellow curry powder? Cumin, like Mexican cumin, you know, for tacos, okay. We can't get enough olive oil in here. This is a very um, Southern French dish. Olives, tomatoes, okay. This is what I use, saporito. Can't find that in the store, so you gotta call me for that. <laughs> this is the best tomato I've ever used. Look at the look at the the nice pieces of tomato in here. About a cup of that, boom. Look now, look at this. I don't want this to cook more than five minutes max. I want to look at this, you guys. Oh, you guys smell that? Smell that. I'm gonna call that done. Maybe three minutes, okay? What 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 you end up with? is vegetables that aren't dead. So I don't want that dead, mushy vegetable. We want this beautiful country look, awesome. Now, your squash, you're gonna, you're gonna see how it puddles like that, all your butter and your syrup in the middle. And you can see the salt down here and the browning. And what you're gonna see is how soft it is. And they just see like a little potato, like a big potato. And it's perfect, it's soft, it's squishy. That took about 40 minutes for us, okay? Awesome. 
wouldn't be ashamed to just put that whole thing. Oh, Dave, I need my carbs. There you go, thank you very much. Enjoy, go cook, we'll see you next time.